Merry Christmas season's greetings, everyone. Okay, it's not Christmas yet. I'll probably have some videos up for Christmas, but uh, uh, yeah, it's it's the season. It's the, it's the season. I'm gonna be wearing this the whole. Um, I might even bring this for my review of Passengers tonight. That's what I'm seeing tonight. Um, and honestly, honestly, I actually could do like a double. Let me actually. And yeah, as you're seeing, this, this is the top five moments from Rogue One. I'll get to the whole explanation for this video in a second, but uh, yeah, I could in. Theory do two screens tonight. I just don't have the cash readily available to do two screens tonight. I could have done a screening for, um, what, what was it? I could, in theory, I could have done a screening for. Actually, I theoretically could have done a screening for all of these. I think, um, because I could have seen saw three o'clock sing, which is less than two hours long. Then I could have gone into uh, passengers at nine oh five. After seeing the less than two hour long, nearly two hour long. No, actually, no, I couldn't have done a triple screen. I could have done a double screen. That's no problem whatsoever. But I'm going to catch the 740 passengers. Point being, though, Rogue One's been out a week now. So, spoilers are already up online, all that stuff. Da, 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 da. And now, I I did a spoiler review. For anyone who wants to see a review with spoilers in it, that's my review. It's a spoiler review. But I, I don't, I'm not going to talk about a. Uh, a thing about the movie that spoiler like I'm not gonna do a top five list or whatever with spoilers involved unless I'm gonna mark it with spoilers and you know what wait a little bit before the spoilers it's just that's just my uh, view on it and I I still don't readily get Mark's a, a view on doing a non spoiler review of the Force Awakens when we were just gonna do a spoiler review anyway uh, and it's just but I think maybe he was trying to do it for hits or something like that at the time but whatever. Uh, but point being, I wasn't going to do this without labeling a spoiler. So there are spoilers in this video. They're, let's be clear. If I'm saying it's the top moments, and I just realized I didn't actually label these moments the, uh, which, now I was trying to debate, uh, top 10 while I'm working this out. I was trying to debate whether I was going to do top 10 or top 5. And I had to think, I was going to wait really to rewatch the movie a second time. I'm probably going to see it again on Christmas with Mark. Uh, but just didn't feel like waiting, and when really thinking over, there are only, like, a good couple key moments that really, uh, that was just like, yeah, 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 um, so, and give me just one second here, this will probably fall into the number, mm, I'll put that at number five, that one's going at the number three marker, two, and then, uh, yeah. All right. So now that I got these ordered. Um, so, yeah, I, I can only think of like oh, uh, like five key scenes that really stood. Out. I I could have pushed it to ten, but I would have probably been um, probably would have been. Uh, I could I easily could have gone to seven. Don't know why I would have labeled it a top seven list, but regardless. Anywho, without further ado, and obviously, as I said, I don't have a lot of editing capabilities on this channel, on my computer personally, so, and I just dropped, oh, there it is. Uh, I just, I had something that I don't want the dog to end up chewing on. So, um, put it on the side. Anyway, without further ado, installing for about three and a half minutes. Uh, yeah, the top, my top five moments in Rogue One. Now, number five is the first Vader scene. Hands down, it's that intro to Mustafa. We know it's on Mustafa. It's Vader's castle. We see the back to tank. It's like, my lord. It's like, uh, Director Krennic. And then we get that dreaded... Uh, ooh, <laughs> then we get that low, ominous uh, empire. It's like, oh, 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 And then, boom, 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 boom. It's like, and you see Vader stroll out there. Now, I had some mild complaints about the look, kind of. He looked a bit puffy to me. I just... He looked very big, and Vader's imposing, but he, he the the original design was a bit sleeker. It, it just kind of looked a bit more like a costume than I would have liked. But that's a that's the most minor name. That scene is so cool because it illustrated Vader's role more in the galaxy than just the thug we kind of see in Episode Four. It illustrated that this is the guy you go to if you want maybe a favor with the emp uh, the Emperor, and if you can get on this guy's good side, you've got a good chance of having some hierarchy of the Empire. Unfortunately, Krennic could not do that, and it just illustrates the point that Vader is not just a physical, imposing warrior of a badass, he is also a political badass, too. It's just like, no, 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 no. 
You you don't you know that's not what happened here. You know the the Senate will hear that it was a mining disaster. There is no Death Star, Director Krennic. It's like see to it that this does not happen again. And then and a lot of people had problems with this line where they just starts choking Krennic. I was like, so I'm still in charge, though. Is that is that the I try not to choke on your aspiration. I'm like, yeah, that's a bit Lucasy, but at the same time, it's the level of Lucasy that I want out of a Star Wars film that I want out of here. I dug that, and that's that really did seem like something Vader would have done too. So, and you know, I mean, I he, um, that the, don't, like don't threaten us. What he did in the first movie too, it was just. I find your lack of faith disturbing. And it's like, trying to, I, you can see Vader still has at least a little bit of a sense of humor. To, it's very dark, drab, droll, almost morbid at points. But he's got a little bit of it there. So for me, the Vader scene was number five. That was awesome. We Because I knew he was in the film. We all knew he was in the film that we saw the trailers or when we saw the trailers. So it was awesome to see him. And that that first uh, meeting, that first scene of him was, was awesome. Number four. Now, theoretically, I could have put the entire third act as a moment, or, or or as a scene moment, whatever. The entire third act belongs on its own list, like, the best parts of the third act. Um, but the th entire third act of this movie is freaking amazing. But my overall, and technically I have two scenes that are in the third act on this list. But the scene in, like, the star fight, like, when the hammer, uh, what was it, the Car uh, Carillion Corvette, smashes into a death smashes a death star a uh, death star smashes a star destroyer into another star destroyer and it just plummets off the shield generator on the planet I'm like woo <laughs> oh man i can't wait to see this movie because i'm seeing this movie again no doubt i am seeing this movie again i saw the force awakens i think three times in theaters i'll probably see this at least a second time probably a third time guarantee you there's going to be a moment i'm seeing it probably christmas with mark because he hasn't seen it yet i pray to god mark you do not watch this video any further <laughs> if you are watching this before we see the movie uh number three though the destruction of jetta now there's two moments i could have put the destruction of um oh god what was the name of it um it was actually a name of. It was actually a planet I knew beforehand. The name, and when they heard that, I'm like, "Oh, I recognize that name." It's basically where the I could have put the destruction of the planet where the Death Star plans were being kept, and that was a pretty cool scene where you know the Jin and uh, that's a very haunting scene. I, that you know that's a that's, that's an honorable, honorable mention. The death and sac the sacrifice of um, Ca uh, Cassius or Cassian, uh, Cassian, and um, uh, Jin. That scene where they were seeing where they're just holding each for the planet and the planet that basically like an atomic blast is coming their way, the blast and everything. That was so hauntingly beautiful that I have to give that an honorable mention. That was just so hauntingly beautiful and sad, but ho hopeful, all in wrapped in one. Like they know they did, they completed the mission. The mission was a success. And they can they can both die in each other's arms. I also like just sidetrack the fact that they decided not to make them romantically involved. I like the fact they went that route. Anyway, though, but it's the destruction of Jeddah that really stands out because it's the first time we see what the Death Star is capable of, not even at full power. In fact, that that's more horrifying than just the planet blowing up instantly because in instantly it's like you know as well, a million voices crying out in terror, and then suddenly silence. They probably didn't. Feel, they probably had a, a moment, uh, a momentary moment of pain, and that's it. With this, this thing. First off, we don't know if the entire planet is actually destroyed with this Death Star. We know a giant chunk of the planets that get hit with just a one reactor or one or two reactor blasts is just raised. It's a planet razor. It's not a destroy. It's a razor. Just you see the Earth basically a lifting up, or well, the Earth, the the ground lifting up. Me, it's almost Inception style. How it's just folding. It's just boom, and then folding upwards in on itself. It's just horrifyingly amazing to watch. You see just Saw just be like, mm, all right, let's do it. Ah, this hurts so much. Um, so it just, oh man, it just, and then they finally get out and they skim like, Jesus. Now again, because it's not the full power of the Death Star, it does, first off, it doesn't uh, destroy the planet instantly. And second off, we don't know if it can com like completely annihilated the entire, from the way they sound, uh, the, from the way they make it sound, it does eventually, like, re destroy the majority, if not the entirety of the planet in some way, shape, or form. Um, because they, Vader talks about, no, they, the Senate will be informed that Jeddah was destroyed in the mining accident. Uh, what kind of mining accident would destroy an entire planet? Yeah, figure that logic out. 
Uh, it was an experimental drill. What experiment? Did, uh, <coughs> yeah, you didn't hear that. Um, so I just, I, I, I don't know. I, that that little bit of logic, I'm not certain of. I have a feeling it doesn't destroy the whole plan, but erase it. It's like if you were to detonate every atomic bomb literally at once. I don't think it would completely destroy the entire planet, but it would destroy a good chunk of it. But anyway. Uh, that's my number three. Number two was the sacrifice of K2SO. Now, we some of us were wondering if every if anyone was going to make it at us of the main cast. Spoilers, no, no, they didn't. So at that point, when you realize that, that these guys aren't making this is a this is a suicide mission. How are these guys going out? Well, they all have some pretty good. Most of these guys have some pretty good deaths. Um, Donnie Yen had a pretty good death. His buddy had a pretty good death. Uh, you know, Jin and, uh, Jin and Cassius, I'm gonna say it's Cassius, um, had pretty good death. Um, the pilot had a de- uh, nah, the pilot probably had the least impactful, least good- Not least impactful, the least impressive death, or the least heroic death. He, uh, he all of a sudden a grenade just, he's out, he gets the message out, and then the grenade just goes, and there's like, crap. Whereas Donnie Yen and his buddy got gunned down, well, he, Donnie Yen got gunned down after, you know, doing something to save the uh, place. Uh, his buddy gets caught in a blast after being shot several times. You know, they get, uh, Jin and Cassius get caught in the blast. But K2's death, because K2 is probably one of the best characters of, in this entire movie. He's the, he's the comic relief, He but he's the droid who's, you know, he's a former Imperial droid officer, or, uh, and he, he, he's there to fight, he helps fight in the resistance and all that, and, you know, it's like he all, it's like he believes in the cause, even though he's just a droid. So, when we see this character that we've grown so much to like, start, you know, he's there, keeping the door open uh, for them, keeping, watching their backs, and he's been given a blaster to shoot stormtroopers, and then he gets shot in the back, and then he shoots them, and we get a good scene of him just, no, don't worry, just Boom, that doesn't even look. But then we see just boom, he's blasting and blasting while trying to keep the door open. And there he's starting to be torn apart. We're like, oh, he's not making it out. And then he eventually just does that sacrifice thing, save it, do it, save it, and then just bl uh, breaks the console and then he just shuts down. Those the lights in his eyes just go. And of course he probably was gone with the planet too. But the, it's, it's that moment where you realize, oh, he's not making it out, and we gotta see this guy that we've grown to like go in a very, in a very heroic, you know, just sacrifice, like, go, boo, and then just boo, doo, doo, and just down, down, just, th that was one of those moments where I just kind of hate your eyes, like, wow, these, these guys are gonna die, <laughs> the, it's, that was the thing, too, was like, the minute K2 goes, and he's honestly the most expensive being a droid, but the minute that K2 went, the, probably what I think even the people who made the movie realized was the most likable character, you quickly realize that no one is safe in this. Everyone's probably going to die. <laughs> when you kill the most likable character, no one's safe. But let's be fair, honest. The number one in this spot, I think what a lot of people's number one is. Not everyone, I'm certain, it's everyone's personal thing, but I think what or at least in the top two. The end scene with Vader. Where, you know, they got the plans, they gotta, they gotta try to, and they're being boarded by the Empire, being boarded by Vader. That dark out hallway, I'm like, because this, this also could have ended in several spots, too. Like, if they had ended the scene with um, them, uh, the Corvette, just blasting off, I'm like, okay, they got the plans of blasting off, Vader's going after them. Didn't get enough Vader, but I would have been happy. And then they get the boarding party, and I'm like, okay. And then we get that darkness, and then the red lightsaber lights, I was like, okay, are they going to cut it here? Because I'm like, oh, that'd be a cock tease, but that'd be amazing cock tease. But no, which is do it, and then you just get the horrifying music. It sounds Star Wars esque, but it sounds like Star Wars horror music. He just boom, boom, takes their gun, throws the guy, cuts him in half, just starts mowing people down like a horrifying monster of a man. And it's like, no, take it, take it. At first he's like, get us out of here. No, take it, take it. Just gets run through with a lightsaber, through the door, and the Vader's still there taking people out. It's like, we gotta get out of here. Oh my god! I think the entire crowd lost it at that point. Just ah! And I was just I was amongst it. Ah! I was like a little kid in the theater again. Oh my! No, granted, I wasn't around for the original trilogy coming out in theater, but for those moments, the awesome moments as a kid, I'm like ah! <laughs> oh man, it was beautiful. It was glorious, and it's what. That, at that moment, we got just the right amount of Vader. If you had just given me that one scene with, and that scene where we briefly see a Vader on the ship uh, about the board, I would have been like, 
we didn't get enough. We got some Vader, but we didn't get enough Vader. I would have said that. Then you add that, so he's like, nope, Vader's done. Perfect amount of Vader. Perfectly used Vader. Oh, so good. <sighs> this movie still stands out about an 8. 8.5 for me. I loved it dearly, but uh, I, st I still noticed some problems I had with it. And honestly, rethinking on it, and I'll have to watch it again to be certain, I have noticed I have some other issues with the film, particularly with Jen Ursa. I actually have some issues with the character when I think about it in the longer, uh, the grand scheme of things. I'll have to watch it again to be certain. I don't think, though, my problems to track my overall score. I still think it's, I still think it's like an 8, 8.5. It's deeply enjoyable. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's my top five moments in Rogue One. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you have ideas for who would wins, what if videos, superhero videos, Star Wars videos. If you have ideas for any of those videos, that is fun. In fact, yeah, that's what I'm going to be saying now from now on. If you've got ideas for any videos, well, you know, Star Wars, Magic, uh, Superhero, who would win, what if videos, any of those ideas you'd like me to go over, please put those in the comments below. Let me know. I will get to them at some point. Um, again, passengers will be night. Nice. I have a magic video uh, planned for just a little bit, actually. I'll be doing it right after I finish with this video. Um, see, I don't know what I will be doing for videos on Sunday, but I mean, box office will be one of them. Uh, but I imagine I will have, I will be doing some video of some kind besides, uh, box office, but we'll see. Uh, anyway, though, thanks you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Happy holidays.